Warning, this video contains some actions that may not be safe. Please be cautious and we claim no responsibility for any injuries obtained from building this device. Hey guys, special video today. I have purchased an S550 hexacopter here and we are going to be assembling this. This was probably around $145 and this is just the frame which is made of polycarbonate, fiberglass, and carbon fiber rods, I think. And it comes with the motors and ESCs. If you don't know what those are, they will be explained later in this video. It doesn't come with the flight controller or anything else. It's just like the main electronics. I do not think it comes with a power distribution board either, but you never know. We'll soon find out. Right here it says PCB check here. I'm not quite sure what that means. Some multi-copters have the function of the frame also being a built-in power distribution board. What we're gonna be doing in this video is, I'm just gonna do an unboxing here, and I have this nice screwdriver set here, and we're gonna see how much of it we can assemble with only a screwdriver. So, let's get started. Okay, let's first go over some advantages of this kit. First of all, it's not just the frame. It actually comes with the ESCs, motors, and the motors and ESCs come pre-soldered with 3.5 millimeter bullet connectors. So that is a great advantage. It's also pretty large, and according to eBay, which is where I got it, it is also pretty durable. For its size, this is an amazingly good price. $145, just look at the DJI Phantom. That thing's like way overpriced. Although it is pre-built, super easy to fly and stuff, it's a lot smaller, it can't lift much weight, and it is a lot more expensive. I mean, like, it's probably like eight times more expensive than this thing. Some disadvantages is it only comes with the motors and ESC. It does not come with the flight controller or any gimbals or GPS modules or anything. I believe on eBay you can get full kits for these, but those are like a lot more, probably like three to $400. So since I already have all that, I just got the frame here. So let's just go over a quick explanation of parts here. Here's some parts that you might not know of. Well, you clearly know of the motor and you might not know of this thing called an ESC. This stands for electronic speed controller and basically what it does is it has a multiple functions. This one has a built-in BEC, which is basically sends power to your receiver and or flight controller. You can tell if it has a BEC because it'll have three wires here, not just two. And so that's one function of this. Another one where it takes the battery's two wires and makes it three wires for the motor. It also allows you to control your motors with your flight controller because it's basically an isolation circuit because your flight controller and or receiver cannot take the voltage that is going through this JST plug here. So this puts out a steady five volts here which your receiver can take. So that is the ESC. The motor here is what you would expect a motor. This plugs into the ESC. If your motor's spinning the wrong way when you plug it in, super easy, you just gotta reverse any of these three wires and it'll start spinning the other direction. You may be wondering what this KV rating on it is. The KV is how many rotations per minute or RPMs you will get if you apply one volt to the motor. Like this one right here is 2,300 KV, so that's actually pretty good. The ones in this kit are like 990 or 980 KV, which is still pretty good, but not great. Usually smaller motors have a higher KV rating because they're smaller. Yeah, let's get started on assembly here. Okay, the first thing to do is actually open our box here. It appears to be pretty well packed, although during shipping, the corners got a little bit dented because all they did is ship this in like a plastic bag. So, none of the parts seem to be damaged though. Comes with some propellers, more propellers, more propellers. You're gonna have to have six of these because it's a hexacopter. You can see we have some 30 amp ESCs here. I'm gonna set these aside. As you can see, the ESCs come pre-soldered with three millimeter bullet connectors there. Although they do not come soldered on that end, which means you're going to need a power distribution board for them. So it looks like they gave you one of those business cards that says, please give us five star rating. I did. Now here's our motors. They're pretty big. Look at those things. 920 kV RHD B2212 motors. They also shipped a bunch of mounting screws in separate little Ziploc bags. Looks like one for each motor. It's a little bit annoying. 
And apparently there's also a bunch of silver screws, which I'm assuming is for assembling the frame. Of multiple sizes. Looks like you got some M3s and M2s in here. More plastic majiggers. Looks like the rods for your landing struts here are actually carbon fiber. That's pretty nice. So these will not be breaking. Carbon fiber is very strong. Got nice squishy pads here on your landing gear. More squishy pads. More carbon fiber rods. Even more carbon fiber rods. Here are your polycarbonate arms that are going to be attaching to your frame here. Looks like you got six of those. And you have a little square of adhesive. I'm not quite sure what that's for though. But we'll set that aside anyway. And here is your frame. It looks like it's fiberglass. I think that's what they advertised it as. Got the front label, all that good stuff. And then here is another piece. I'm not quite sure which one's the top, which one's the bottom, but we will soon find out. Now we have all our parts out. I think we can fold up our box here and now we can begin assembly. So I'm gonna be assuming we're gonna be building the main frame here, just like this. I'm assuming we're gonna be using some of these silver screws because these are the ones we have the most of. And I'm just gonna see which ones fit in the holes. It looks like it's gonna be these, which look like M2s. Take up our screwdriver and find the right one. Okay, make sure not to lose any of these screws. It can probably be helpful to have a screw mat. Gonna set the rest of the arms aside. Here, and do one arm at a time. Okay, I'm assuming this one with the giant rectangle in the center is gonna be the top plate because it just happens to fit perfectly with our arm here. It's got three screw holes, while this one does not have three screw holes aligned. And there's like this little nub here and that fits perfectly into our arm. I'm gonna slide it there like that and then take one of these screws here and screw it in. Now we're on to the next step. Okay guys, so what I've done here is taken our little squishy pad thingies, just loosened these screws, slid it onto the bar and retightened it, and then did that with both sides. It's pretty self-explanatory. It looks like it is time to mount our GoPro gimbal slash battery mount here. And for those parts, you're gonna need some of these, some more screws, and these little mountain thingamabobs here. And of course your two rods and these two things that pop into them. Just like that. And here's some mounting grabbers. And these are gonna be screwed in the two screw holes here, 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 and here. So that makes up a total of eight holes. And there's gonna be lined up kind of like this. Let's get started and just screw those in real quick. Okay, now that you've screwed on your four small mounting bracket thingies here, it's time to take your shock absorbers and just pop these in. They're like little rubbery things and they can just be squished right in there. Okay, I finished sticking in my little squishy shock absorbers there. We can now set this frame part aside and we can work on our battery and camera mount. For this, you're gonna need your two bars here and your little bar mounts. You're gonna need your battery mount, your camera mount, and two more of these little mounting thingies. There's also gonna be two shock absorbers and a set of different Phillips head screws. So the first thing you wanna do is take your little metal bars and pop them into your Y thingamabobs here, just like that. Make sure they're aligned. Then you can switch to a Phillips head screwdriver and take two of your Phillips screws out. Put a screw through each one of these four holes and you're gonna wanna line those up with these here. So you're gonna spread them apart till they fit perfectly. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick in two screws here and here and then I'm gonna spread the other one further apart so I don't have to get it exactly perfect the first time because that's kind of challenging. just like that. And if you're gonna be mounting a camera without a gimbal, you can screw on with two more of these little mounting pieces here. And those are gonna go onto your little fiberglass mount here on the other side where the little indents are because that's for the little screws to go in.
just like that. Now on to the next step. Now you can, just like you did on your frame over there, take your little squishy shock absorbers and pop them in your holes here. Okay, now that you have your camera mount assembled, you can move back to your battery mount and your bars here and slide those partially through your frame here, but you're gonna wanna pop this in, so don't go all the way. Once you're about halfway like that, you can take your battery mount and just pop that in. Hey guys, so now that you have slid your rods through, you can slide on your camera mount. I have just gone ahead and done that. So you can just kind of like wiggle that on there. I let my bar slide a little bit further back here because it kind of looks weird having these giant things stick out front. If you have a battery strap, that can go through here to strap your battery on and your camera, if you have a GoPro mount, a little sticky GoPro thing can go here or you can use some form of homemade strap thingamabob. I think right now we are pretty much done with the lower assembly here and it is time to move on to soldering on our ESCs and stuff over here. But before that, we have to go work on installing our motors. So hey guys, if you notice here, we have six motors here, each with their own little set of screws. And we are going to be using these little convenient sacks of four screws to screw each one of the motors onto our little polycarbonate injection molded arms here. So let's get started. Okay, first you're gonna take out one bag of your screws. And I'm just gonna empty them onto the table here. These are the nice screws here because they are weatherproofed. I'm not sure why you'd want them to be weatherproofed, but they are. As you can see, some of them are silver and some of them are black, which in my opinion is pretty cool. And I'm gonna have them alternating silver and black. So I'll have like silver, black, silver, black. Doesn't really matter, but I think it'll look cooler like that. So you're gonna wanna mount your motor so the little wires with the bullet connector are facing down the arm. You don't want it over here or over here. You want it facing down because otherwise they'll have to go like crazy weird ways around the motor and that'll be very bad. So I'm just gonna take these four screws here and stick them through the four screw holes and we will be right back. Hey guys, so we are down in the lab here and we are gonna be soldering on our ESCs now. So like I said earlier, this bottom plate here actually doubles as a power distribution board. Near each one of the little places where the arms come out, there's actually a positive and a negative sign and two little golden plates. We're gonna be soldering on the ESCs appropriately. If you don't already know, positive is red. It always goes to positive. So the ESCs will be orientated like this and black is always negative and that always goes to the negative port. This one goes to your flight controller. Don't have to worry about that now. While you're doing this, make sure to wear some safety glasses because the solder can splatter. Also, I'm gonna be using this iron right here with my one pound of solder here. This stuff is included in the link below from eBay. It's dirt cheap stuff. And this soldering iron is also dirt cheap. Make sure to have like a soldering iron sponge too so you can like kind of wipe your iron on this. If you don't already know how to solder and stuff, we will be soon producing a video on how to solder. And when that is produced, there will be a link below. So let's get started. So like I said, red's gonna go to positive and black is gonna go to negative. So to do this, what I'm gonna first do is get a small pool of solder on my soldering iron. So just a little dot kind of building up there. Just like that, then I'm gonna continue to build that dot on top of this plate. As you can see, it solder sticks. Keep doing that until you have a nice little pool, just like that. And then you can connect your wire. Then you're gonna wanna do that for the negative wire and do those for all the rest of the ESCs. Take your time on this, you do not wanna mess up. Make sure to do this in a ventilated area and have fun. Now that you have all your ESC soldered on, it's time to go upstairs to add a little bit of hot glue to each one of these connections to make sure they stay nice and strong and don't fall off during your flight. Cause trust me, that would be very, very bad. And your very expensive hexacopter here 
would become a very expensive wreck on the ground. So, let's go do that. Hey guys, so we are back upstairs again, and we are here with our soldered ESCs and a glue gun, and this is one of those situations that glue just can't hurt to put on. I mean, this stuff is great. It's an insulator, it's dirt cheap, it's liquid when it's hot, and it's solid when it's cold. I personally think this is one of the world's greatest inventions. More to the point, what we're gonna be doing is squirting some of the hot glue over our, our little solder points here. Make sure not to get them on the screws or on your landing gear, because that'll just seal it to the frame here. This is gonna be to prevent excess stress on the solder point and just to give it some extra protection. You're just gonna add a little bit, just a little dot, just like this. Make sure to cover the whole thing all around, just like that. And you're gonna to wanna to do that for all of them. on to the next step. Hey guys, it is now time to go take your silver M2 screws and attach your bottom plate with your top plate. So, if you look at the bottom here, there are actually two holes here aligned with each little arm here. So you're gonna wanna put two screws in each of the holes. My ESC wires through the center because there's like these two little pillars here. I'm running my ESC wires through the center and that is on the arm. So, let's get started. Okay, just like that. Now, it is time to start mounting your ESCs. You're gonna need for that some of these large, fatter cable ties. Because there's six rotors, you're gonna need six, but I just happen to have eight with me because I'm assuming I'm gonna mess up a few times. So to do that, it's gonna be super simple. You just gotta take your ESC, put it up against your arm here, take your cable tie, wrap it around the ESC, tighten it, and then you're gonna wanna do that for all the other ESCs. And you may be wondering, well, what are we gonna do with these? smaller zip ties that I have sitting around this table. Those are for when you finally connect your motors to your ESC cables here to actually kind of like strap the wires under it here because there's some excess wire. But before you can actually do that, you have to make sure your, all your motors are spinning the right way. And to do that, you need your flight controller and that is still in the mail and we will show you how to do that in another video. But for this video, all you need to do is strap your ESCs onto your arms with these zip ties. So I'm gonna go do that and we'll be right back. Just like that. Now we are, are basically done assembling our frame here. We hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, subscribe, and if you have any other video ideas, leave a comment in the link below. More videos on the S550 Hexacopter will be coming soon, along with how to install your flight controller, how to program your flight controller, how to install GPS, how to wire up your motors, and a lot more. See you next time.